So, I was scrolling TikTok and came across a video of a 24-year-old explaining how she thought she was magically going to be famous one day. And today she still finds herself within that mindset. Let's see if I got any new comments. Oh, man. So I went to the comments and found thousands of people agreeing with her that they too just expected it to be something that would happen to themselves randomly. They blamed it on the culture of TV we grew up with like Hannah Montana, Sunny with the Chance, Starstruck, Victorious, all starring talented young actors and actresses that had a big break. Which actually reminded me of this TV show I just watched called Zack Stone is Gonna Be Famous. I'm gonna be famous! Zack Stone! Woo! It was directed by Bo Burnham in 2013 and aired on MTV, but it was later canceled. The show for one season on MTV got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> So shitty, my fans cheer at the cancellation. <laughs> if you haven't watched the show yet, I highly recommend you pause this and come back. For everyone who has watched the show, let's talk about it. The TV show follows the story of a young high school graduate named Zach Stone who had no plans for college or his future, and he decides to dump all of his money on hiring a film crew to record his journey to fame. Throughout the episodes, we witness Zack Stone come across laughable ideas that are supposed to launch himself into fame. Zack Stone is gonna go missing and everyone will be like, oh no, where did Zack go? Zack Stone is gonna be a famous chef. Zack Stone is gonna make a sex tape. Zack Stone is gonna make with each episode, it becomes apparent that Zack doesn't care what he has to do or who he disappoints along the way. While that's often seen in other shows as motivating and courageous, and Zack Stone is going to be famous, it shows the gripping reality of it all. Which his dad often reminds him of. Andrew, Amy and Greg earned their freedom because their parents are actually proud of them. Andrew! Making it, okay? You can't expect me to work at the grocery store for 40 hours a week. Well, you will have no choice next week. You need a job and income. Fame will be my job. The love of my fans will be my income. And money has income, lots of it. No, I, I, no, come on. You come on. No, as your parents, we can tell you that when you go broke next week, we won't be bailing you out. Great. I won't need it. No, where are you going? I'm going to get famous, all right? And to prove to you two that I'm not an idiot. Especially when he's close to running out of money to pay his TV crew, and he's forced to accept a promotion at a job that he is not passionate about. I'm okay, thanks. Okay. Zach accuses his family and best friend Greg of not being supportive, and there's even moments where we see Zach being discouraged. You okay? Uh, yeah, just some of my parents. Do you want to talk about it? No. I want to rock. Until the final episodes where a news reporter and camera crew show up to his house wanting to interview him. Although he'll only be on the air for three minutes, Zack obviously will make this all about him and do whatever it takes to stay famous. But then he does something out of the usual. Instead of taking the three minutes on air to do something outrageous, he instead proclaims his love for Amy, who he thought left to college already. That's, that's not just any short haired blonde girl at the end. That's Amy. And you'd love her, America. She's really cool. She's funny. And she's smart. And she's pretty, obviously. You know that. Amy surprises Zach in the back room, and then uh, just before Zach's camera crew stops recording, Zach and Amy walk outside of the news building and find girls gushing over him because of the way he proclaimed his love for Amy on the air. But then we hear Zach begin to chant his personal theme song to himself, and the camera pans to Amy, and her wide smile slowly turns into a frown as she stares blankly at the camera. It's gonna be famous, Zach. No. Zack Stone is a narcissist. Amy's face leaves us with a gut-wrenching realization. As a viewer, we know from the perspectives of the camera crew that Zack has tried almost every possible aspect to try and get himself famous, even if it meant embarrassing his brother or profiting off of other people's work. Yee! 
You don't know what I've been through. Sack. Language. Born and raised in London. Sweeping chimneys. Cooking on cobblestone, mate. You don't know me. Get out of my kitchen. Would we really put it past him to try one last thing that he never revealed to the audience? A long-term plan of using Amy to launch himself into fame? Because we know that Zack isn't stupid. College just wasn't something that he wanted to do because of his experience in high school. I've read other reviews from other YouTube channels and comments that theorize Amy's frown at the end says it's her disappointment that Zack hasn't changed. But I disagree with that. I think it was more than just that. It was the silent and gut-wrenching realization that Amy was being used for her feelings for him. And although I don't like Amy at all, which we'll get into later, this simple act of chanting his theme song while signing autographs told us that an act of seemingly selfless love was still truly for his own benefit. You could argue that Zack wanted to be famous to be rich, but he never mentioned that he wanted to be rich for the benefit of other people. It was always more of a security for himself since the people in his world were going off to college and leaving him behind. That was what was made clear since the beginning. Zack Stone wanted to be famous. Because what would that leave him with if everybody left? The plan all along was to get famous. But hell, I just need the platform. Right. I had the plan. Right. I'm a, I got Even in the scene where Zack apologizes to Greg by packing his things for college, he still included a picture of himself to save himself from looking bad in Greg's eyes. Because we know as the viewer that for as long as Zack and Greg's friendship lasted, Zack always was trying to make himself the center of attention, pulling Greg along with him without even considering how Greg felt about his wild ideas. Yes, yes! And you could say that was just Greg being a good friend to his friend Zack, but I think there's a reason why Greg stayed with Zack all these years. I like to call it trauma bonding. They went through high school together being bullied and experienced being losers together. That's why Zack was so offended when he found out Greg had already had sex but never told Zack. Because Greg knew Zack would view it as a betrayal even though losing his virginity had absolutely nothing to do personally with Zack. I'm, I'm actually sorry. You're I, sorry? Are you serious? Dude, I tell you everything. Okay, just calm down. You know, you two. Get out of your room. Get out of Some theorize that Zack was in love with Greg and that's why he acted the way he did around him. But even if that were the case, we still see Zack constantly leverage Greg's life decisions against him. Making him think that Zack's feelings are valid all the time, guilt tripping Greg along the way. Even when Amy was in a relationship with Nick, Zack still made it about himself. He would cross boundaries and self-sabotage, disrespecting their relationship, and eventually leading to Amy cheating on Nick with him. Amy? Amy, mm. Yes. Oh my I mean, of course cheating was entirely Amy's decision, but Zack still coerced Amy and always thought of Amy's and Nick's relationship as something satire. Which sort of still confuses me. Like, were we supposed to cheer for Zack when Amy was clearly cheating on Nick? And even though Nick and Amy eventually broke up, Zack still assumed that Amy wouldn't feel guilty for cheating and asked her out without hesitation. I, I, I didn't mean to hook up with you and I, I, I didn't mean to cheat on Nick, okay? I, I, I don't know, it just, it just happened, okay? I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Zack constantly contradicts himself. With Christy Ackerman, the popular girl, he made us believe that she wanted more than what she verbally told Zack she wanted from the beginning. And she was the only one remotely close to how Zack acted, yet he couldn't understand that. He even made it clear from the beginning that he needed a co-star, and he somehow made the audience and himself believe that Christy was this girl who wanted him for his fame and to make a sex tape. When she never wanted a sex tape, she just understood the assignment, and understood that their relationship was just for the cameras as Zack literally told her. We're doing the show, right? Yeah, no, I know that, but I mean, I just thought we could hang out with other cameras around. Does that sound like such a horrible idea to you? Are you serious? And then Zack initially claimed he didn't want Amy filmed on his journey to fame. Look, okay, look, these... Look, these cameras are ways for me to change things, okay? And you should, you should be unedited or whatever.
But even though he was so strong about this in the beginning, he still included her. And we as the viewer watch them slowly begin to admit their feelings for each other with each episode, but that end shot really sealed the fact that we never knew Zack's true intentions with anything ever. That even though we were so close to him and thought there was perhaps more to his character than what he showed us on the surface, there was no deeper aspect to his intentions. Zack was really as shallow as he seemed. Zack Stone really did do anything to reach his goal in the end, even if it meant betraying his own feelings. Zack Stone was going to be famous.